goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. You can believe in the criteria that we have set for how we would be judging MCs going forward. Um, and for those of you who know all about the uh, top MCs video we did that we started round one, um, we've already made our list and we're working on the top MC of the 2000s. Um, so to make it on this list, the person had to have an album um, from the year 2000 or after. It couldn't have come before that. Um, their first album, I mean, um, they had to meet the, the threshold of the three criteria that we set to judge all MCs, which is lyricism, marketability slash earning potential, and um, obviously MCing, your ability to control a stage, your stage show, your stage presence, et cetera. Um, so yeah, now our list has been bracketed. The brackets were formed um, pretty much kind of random here. Um, and in a minute, yeah, let me pull up the list so I could tell y'all. So the list of MCs that we actually chose that have been bracketed that we're gonna start speaking on tonight are as follows. Kendrick Lamar, 2 Chains, Joe Budden, Royce Five Nine, Pusha T, Beanie Siegel, Big Sean, Wale, Rick Ross, Chance the Rapper, J. Cole, Conway the Machine, Lupe Fiasco, Childish Gambino, Meek Mill, Toby Nigue, Denny the Butcher, Nicki Minaj, Killer Mike, Schoolboy Q, and Fabulous. Now, out of that list, now that they've been bracketed, they have been seated at random. Because they've been seated at random, they have been placed in a bracket where they have an opening round kind of play in. So my people who are familiar with uh, NCAA, y'all, it'll make sense to y'all. Um, basically, we have a round that they have to win to actually get to the quarterfinals. So what we're going to do tonight is the partners are going to decide. The uh, We're going to basically decide who's going to win these play-ins and make it into the official quarterfinals of the bracket. And then from here on out, the way this will work, the partners, we're going to decide who moves on to the quarterfinals by deciding who wins the opening round based on our three established criteria, lyricism, marketability, slash earning potential, and stage performance, slash MC. Takes two out of three votes to make it to the next round. So at least two partners have to agree. If it's only one of us that agree, that person will not. The two, whoever two people roll with is how we're going to decide now, this is where you come in, Pod Squad, because by the time you hear this, the brackets will be up on our social media pages, um, and it will be ready for you to vote on. So beginning in the quarterfinals, the Pod Squad will also vote on who they feel should move on. Their pick counts as two votes. It will then take, two, take three out of five votes to win, meaning it is possible for the pod squad and only one partner to move a candidate forward. Therefore, the pod squad, we need y'all to vote. The link is in the description and on all platforms. So get out there and vote because we're gonna need y'all to decide some uh, arguments and debates next week. Now, after that, we're gonna continue that same process each week until the top MC of the 2000s is finally crowned. We will then begin our top MCs before 2000s list so that we can bracket that and crown that winner, ending with the final debate. Who is the top MC of all? Oh. So, yeah, um, please, please, please get out there and vote. Get out there and vote. And now. Y'all ready to see who's in the opening bracket, in the play-in bracket, in the in the in the in the kick-in bracket here, fellas? Yeah, let's do uh, Let's get let's to see the some. shits then. Let's get to the shits. So uh let me see how I can do this. I don't know. 
Okay, I can share. <laughs> but I need to figure it out. No, I got it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to share it with y'all so y'all can actually see it. You feel there you go. I figured you'd do that. You stupid. Yeah. All right, here we go. Can y'all see that? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So this is the bracket, my people. As you can see, Kendrick Lamar is the number one seed. I did not do this. It was literally at random. Um, but in the play-in, we got Benny the Butcher versus Tobin Nigue, Fabulous versus, versus Conway the Machine, Lupe Fiasco versus Schoolboy Q, Killer Mike versus Childish Gambino. So these are the eight people who are vying to get into the quarterfinals. Which which one y'all want to start with, fellas? Oh, oh man. hold on, hold on. I forgot. And Meek Mill versus uh, Nicki Minaj. I forgot we had the domestic violence. Uh, that is that is hilarious. <laughs> I forgot that all is we had so. That, that is hilarious. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> well, hey, it is what it is. If we get in trouble, it'll be good trouble. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, the first one gonna be tough, man. I think I think it'll be fine, King. I think it'll be just fine. Um, but yeah, man, y'all ready? How y'all yeah. Wow. Head it up. All right. So um, tell me something. When I do this, right? Hold up. Mm-hmm. Hold up. Hold up. All right. When I do this, did anything get smaller or change on your screen? Somewhat. Yeah. How about now? Uh, yeah, that, it changed. Is that just screen. the bracket now? Nah, it's just um, it's the bracket, and they got all the side information, the bracket information on the left hand side. Yeah, that that the side this stuff over here is fine. I'm not tripping on that. Okay, want to make sure that you can actually see the bracket. Yeah. All right. So, which one y'all want to start with first? Don't matter to me. Yeah, let's go with the first one. That's cool. gonna be the hard one. So first, what we got: <laughs> Benny the Butcher versus Toby Nigue. Now, Pod Squad, I'm gonna give y'all some context here. This could get a little rough to where mm-hmm. we might have to argue because this Toby Nigue is one of my favorite artists. Benny the Butcher is one of Padawan's favorite artists. Mm-hmm. So we could have some. Uh, some Civil War shit going down real quick. <laughs> um, straight like that. So just to let y'all know beforehand of how that could go. Yeah. If it get real, just know that that's why. All right. Um, in the meantime, in between time, let's get to chopping this fable. Benny the Butcher versus Toby Negre. Lyricism. Let's start at the hard one. Let's just go straight oh, for the gusto. Let's not fuck around with it and not play with it. Let's just call it, let's just get to what it is. Lyricism. See. Anybody jump in here? Not just me. My, my bias is Benny because I just been listening to him for the past three to four in his camp up to five years. So but I know Toby got a message with his stuff. Man, I, it's kind of toe to toe with me, but I'm I'm gonna just I'm gonna sign with Team B- Benny. I just because that's just what I've been listening to more. Mm-hmm. But as far as listen, like. It, it's already been said, man. Both of them are great lyricists. It's like I have not heard a slack Benny rhyme. I have not heard a slack Toby rhyme at all. Like every time I've listened to Toby, uh, I can I can go back and listen to him, and I'll catch something else. Same way I would catch Benny. It's just that their content is different. Okay, I can rock mm-hmm. with that. That makes sense. This um... is way too hard. <laughs> Face. I mean, I 
for me personally, I'm a little biased to Toe because I mean, I listen to him more than Benny. I think I've heard like one or two songs from um, Benny myself, but that's because I choose not to. Um, it's not because I don't think he, he's not a lyrical individual or he doesn't have um, good music. It's just not what I, at this point in, in my, how can I say, in my musical journey, that's not just what my ear wants to hear right now. I feel you. So I tend to do more Toby shit in the journey where I, in the, at this point where I'm in my journey. Um, so I will be more biased in that in, in, in that question. So I would automatically lean to Toby or lean that way. Well, I'll go ahead and break this time. Um, this is my honest feeling. I've been listening to a lot of the uh, Conway Machine, Benny the Butcher stuff uh, lately to kind of get ready for this topic. Um, on lyricism, I actually have them as a tie. Um, between the two of them, they are very different in what their content is but they are both equally proficient. Um, they both say really cool shit, but neither one to me is like God tier lyricists. They're just really great rappers. Um, so I put them there. So I would say they're tough lyricism, which takes us to marketability. I guess I didn't break, it, break any tie, did I? Uh. Um, marketability. Um, um I'm going to I'm say, going to say, oh, go ahead, Faith. Go ahead. I'm going to say Benny's more marketable. Say more. Um, at this, at this day and age with his, um, his style, his slow and with his crew as well. Um, that's more marketable on a wide range. Um, the positivity and the style that Toby brings is very unique. Um, it's becoming more wide scale, more more wide scale accepted, I should say, and more people are getting into it. With the, um, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, and being people, people trying to be more conscious and more aware of what they're saying and doing, and just his positivity that his music brings, and just the the the, the different way he says things, but. As far as it being profitable and marketable, I will go with Benny. Okay. Um, I'm going to say this the same way I said it when we got uh, Toby on this list. I ain't heard fucking Beyonce shouting out Benny the Butcher. I ain't heard Dave Chappelle shouting out Benny the Butcher. So as far as uh, record sales and stuff, I don't even think Toby has put out an official like album per se. So I don't know that I can judge him against that as far as record sales, but on views and impact as far as uh, being a face and stuff, like I feel like Toby has more reach. So I'm going to go with Toby. Well, because I've been following his um his career so far i'm going to say benny just because all right he didn't have beyonce shouting him out but he's have he's he's had talks with jay-z um he's i i'm just saw actual new um interview with him all going around with breakfast club and this that and the third but i mean i, I believe toby uh toby's the same thing uh he wait. The last what was it? Last year, burden of proof or whatever. That's when he came out. But he's been coming out with back to back albums. I'm pretty sure he comes out with a, like a project every four, like up to two to three projects a year, pretty much. But yeah, to and he's already got a whole album with uh, a famous top tier producer which was is hit boy pretty much and he already got features like big features with rick ross you know what i'm saying like 
um, he's already he's already there or whatever. He just needs that one thing to push him a little bit further. Like he's like right there at that tipping point where his name can get household, become a household name, pretty much. So I'm gonna lean, I'm gonna lean toward Benny just off of that. Whatever. Not to say Toby isn't marketable, because I'm like, like his visuals are every last one of his um videos I've seen is just is fire, it's just artwork, pretty much. But it's just that I've seen Benny's name out a lot more. Okay. So y'all got Benny for marketability. It was a tie for lyricism. We go into the sudden death round. What is or who has the best stage performance? Who is the best MC, the better like MC as far as their performance? How do they get across the lyrics to their mm-hmm. listener? This is on record, on stage, on camera. Whenever they're performing their lyrics, how do they get it across? Well, I obviously, because I've seen like Benny's um, like concerts and stuff like that. And then I just hear other, other MCs talk about them. Pretty much, and I kind of judge it off of that. Like, what are the like the MCs that I feel like people would just naturally respect what they would say towards the person's like um, concert or whatever? And most of them are just like, yo, know, if it, it has that old feeling. A lot of New York heads like them because they're from upstate New York or, or whatever. But like, they when somebody come out to see Benny the Butcher or whatever, it's a certain crowd that comes out, and he has a he has a certain fan base and they always seem to show out every time they come out or whatever. So can't really just, I can't really like say no to his stage presence or whatever. In fact, he's actually been out here a couple of times too. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Face. Uh, we talking about um, stage presence and shit. What would you say? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with um Toby. I like the the artistic way he gets his message across and he gets his he gets his lyrics across. I like the the, the, the all in family approach because he, he regardless of his own videos on record or on on stage, it's like an all inclusive family vibe. So his whole clique, you feel me? Like it's all of them there. It's a also all in vibe from the from him to his wife to the kids to the the producer to you feel me like that vibe right there it, it's a their vibe builds a bigger vibe and everybody else feels that you feel me like and it draws you in it's one thing to be there as a fan but it's a, another thing oh shit it's yeah. one thing to be there as a fan but it's another thing to be there as part of a fan. That's real. That's real. Um, I'm going Toby on this. I'm going Toby on this one as well. Um, on everything he does, he has a way of like even his interviews. He's performing like, and it's a wider it's a wider array of people that would be that would gravitate toward him. Like he he would get everybody from a Christian to a hardcore just hip-hop head, to a regular dude off the street, to an up-north cat, to a down-south cat. Like, I feel like his appeal is wider. So I'm going to go with Toby. And I've, like, just seen his shows where he's had people in the audience crying, just singing, uh, South Side, we ride with choppers. Like, I've seen that, that I've seen him, like, captivate a crowd and had that intimate mm-hmm. connection with him, so yeah. And that nigga can dance. Benny can't dance. Nigga told me to dance. What <laughs> the fuck? And you going to you, man? This is a hard like. How is it? This is a hard decision anyway, because it's like 
I like Toby too. And I like the artistic side of him and everything too. But it, it all depends on like what you want as a vibe when you go out. As far as when it comes to stage, like if I'm in a neo soul vibe, I'm probably going to go to Toby or whatever, whatnot. If if I'm if I'm in my boom bap, I need to hear some rugged shit. You know, just being my own, <laughs> just being my hip hop self. I'm gonna go to Benny. So Toby got mm. that type of shit, that boom bap shit where he just spitting. He got all that. Now what I'm saying, like you gotta open up your mind to the catalog. I'm telling you, you missing out on something. He got all those, but um, so right now we still stand at a tie for these two. Um I don't really have a I don't really have an answer for it. I didn't expect it that they go like that. You gotta give it to the pod squad, man. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm about to but make yeah, a break. Yeah, make a uh, make a poll real quick, Pat. <laughs> that individual poll will decide that one. Not, not that one, face. Not that kind. Damn it, face. Um, I ain't said. Oh, you said shit. Um. So the next, <laughs> the, moving on. The next bracket is Fabulous versus Conway the Machine. I feel like this. Yeah. Is my Mm. Lyricism. Mm. I'm going to the machine. Oh, this is different. I'm one Conway. Um, I like Fab, but I'm digging this Conway fella. Uh, listen to more of his music, um, more than the Butcher. Uh, and <coughs> I, I, I like his wordplay. You feel me? I like his lyricism. Yeah. And he comes with something different. You feel me? Um, the, the draw is something different. Um, maybe the injury, but it's something mm-hmm. different. Um, Fab has that typical up north Brooklyn flow in sound. Um, so it gets gotten kind of um, how that, monotonous after a while. So, regardless of what you're saying, it's always going to sound the same. If you feel what I'm saying. Can I hold you up real quick? Go ahead. I'm putting voice and flow in the performance here. Just personally. I'm not talking about about I'm talking about about lyrics. Like, what are you saying and how are you putting those words together? to, To me, like, all that compares because if, if if it's monotonous, I'm not even gonna want to hear what you're saying because it's gonna continue to sound the same. So you can have the hottest, you can say the hottest line in this bar, but the next bar you say like exactly the same cadence and exactly the same. You feel like you saying exactly the same. It's gonna turn my interest to what you're saying all. So regardless of how tight what you're saying is, it's not even gonna get to my ear. So where Conway may be different and his delivery, his lyrics are still, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, ah, it's on the tip of my tongue, but they're still appealing to me on a every bar, on a every bar thing. Not saying that Fab is old, so I don't wanna listen because he's an old, old rapper, you feel me? Like to me, I'm just saying, what he's saying ain't current to me. You feel me? So his lyrics don't appeal to me as much. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Well. Um. Okay, Pat. Um. I say, God, it's hard. Ah. Uh, I'm going to go with Conway because I feel like Conway has more range. It's not even range. It's just like, all right, he has punchlines and bars and stuff like that, but there's there's a purpose for every bar. Like, he, he got a story. 
there's a story for every bar that he has. He's not just making the song to make a hit or whatever behind the lyricism. Um, is is just he's he's just hungrier. He's a whole lot hungry, and that you could play that in the fact that you know Fab has already got his is already uh, established or whatever. So Conway going to naturally be hungrier anyway or whatever. But I also got to put into play that sometimes Fabulous, don't get me wrong, Fabulous is one of the greatest lyricists um, that hip hop has ever produced to me or whatever. But he also has some times where he made some corny songs to me and corny uh, bars to me or whatever. You know, Breathe is like one of my favorite rap songs of all time. So I'm going to give it to Conway because I just, I don't know. I just feel his shit a little bit more. Like I can hear the pain in his lyrics pretty much. Well, Fab, I had your back. Um, I was going to vote for you for lyricism, but definitely got outnumbered on that. So, uh, we just move to marketability. <laughs> I think Fabulous. I think Fabulous got this one handed down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They go. They both go on tour tomorrow. Fabulous going worldwide. Conway going nationwide. Yeah, that goes without yeah. saying. <laughs> Pretty much goes without saying. I think we're all in agreement with that. Yeah, about to play with so yeah. it takes it to the deciding factor, hopefully. And that goes. I'm seeing. Stage presence. Moving How you crap. present your rhymes. Moving that crap. Right. I'll start it then. I'm going to okay. say Conway. Mm. Um, like Faye said, he's more dynamic in his vocal tone, his range, his uh, flow patterns. Um, and he has a uh, more realism, which does matter in hip hop, especially. Um, you believe him more when he's spitting. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with Conway. Um, I'm gonna go with Conway too with the 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 believability. Um, not saying that you can't believe some of Fab songs, but just. If you hear Fab and you hear some of his music, some of the more gangster songs he's put out, and then you see Fab, you feel me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but then you hear some of Fab's other music, more the pop, popish music, and then you see him, then you be like, oh yeah, okay. But you look at the Conway flow and the Conway music, and then you see a Conway performance, and you get a different feel for that. You get more, yeah, I, I'm in the moment. I, I can feel what you're saying. I, I, I can see you in that situation. You feel me? Right. So uh, the delivery is more believable. It gives a more, um, uh, it, it makes the fan draw in more because we all know people love music they can relate to more. You feel me? Like more realistic vibes. Or, I'll rock with that. Well, Pat, um, I don't know what you was going to say, but you might as well at least go ahead and tell us your thoughts. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I think Fabulous' tragic flaw is that he got that that New York rapper arrogance. No offense to my New York rappers, because I love New York rappers too. But they got that, some someone got that New York arrogance where I'm going to just say my rhyme and the rhyme itself in my, in my image is going to just all I need. Pretty much, and Fabulous has that that arrogance. It's slash confidence, but arrogance. Like we've, um, like I've been, I've been to little, you know, shoot, we've probably been to the same one that, like, where you come down in the Hamptons, um, University or whatever, and you know, there's some stage shows where he rocks it, and then it's just some stage shows, you know, he just going there to get that check, and then he going to the next show. Pretty much. So, but Conway, every single time, seemed like he put his heart on the line every time he say a rhyme. Period. Like, if it's just a simple freestyle on like Funk Flex or some radio show, 
or if it's on stage or if it's on Jimmy Kimmel or whatever. He, I feel everything he says. So I'm going to just go with Conway. Right on. Well, in that case, Conway wins. He makes it into the next round. He is on the face. Push a T. Um, oh. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Um, the, mm-hmm. next, the next one for this opening round, though, we got Lupe Fiasco versus Schoolboy Q. Mm. Anybody want to make the opening uh, case for either one of the three categories? Um, we'll go lyrical. We're gonna have to go man. We're gonna have to go Lupe on lyrics. Um, nothing more has to be said. I mean, it's Lupe, the lyrics. Yeah, he's known just to be lyrical. Um, I don't think Lupe is known for much more than being lyrical. Um, mm-hmm. Schoolboy Q is known, but he's not known for just being just lyrical on the on the level that Lupe is. Um, now, that's not to this shit. that's not saying Lupe is God level because nowhere is he God level, but he is higher than Schoolboy Q on lyrical. You're goddamn close. Uh, I... We're gonna get to that at some point. I feel like in this conversation, but not tonight. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to just agree with him. Lupe is definitely more lyrical. It's not even close to me as far as the writing specifically is concerned. Yeah. Same with me. It goes It goes without saying. Lupe puts you in his world and he says some crazy stuff. And I'm not even the biggest Lupe fan, but I give respect when respect due. So. Yeah, he a problem. <clears throat> um, mm-hmm. So oh, Lupe got lyricism. What about marketability? Um, for me, I'm definitely gonna roll with Schoolboy Q. Um, I feel like his his appeal is he, he appeals to a wider audience. Um, I feel like he's known to have larger crowds at his shows. Um, on average, um, I feel like they both might be down at this point, but I know that was a point where Schoolboy was rocking like festivals and shit on the regular. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I guess Lupe has to. Um, but I definitely think the wider appeal goes to Schoolboy Q, huh. the more cultural relevance. Like, I feel like hip-hop has no Lupe, but if you go outside of hip-hop, people would know Schoolboy. Yeah. And I think that's where the division lies for me. I agree there. No conversation either. Yeah. I'm saying here, but you said it. <laughs> Who rocked the crowd better? Who's the better stage performer? Who's the better performer of their lyrics, period? Mm. Stage or otherwise? Mm. I'll go ahead and just jump out there again. I'll say... (sighs) I'm going to say Lupe. Mm. He has more pockets he can jump into. He has a very good stage show itself. Um, he's very animated and like interactive with the crowd. Um, he does a lot of the same stuff Schoolboy Q does as far as like crowd surfing and that type of thing, but he does even more on the stage himself. Um, so I'm gonna roll with Schoolboy Q. I mean, I'm gonna roll with Lupe Fiasco. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to go with Schoolboy on that one, man. Um... Yeah, Lupe got a couple of different pockets, but uh, uh, Schoolboy got something he can jump in that Lupe can't jump in, I feel. Um, that, that gangster element he can jump in. And that's a wide appeal. Especially um, if we go in national, like you say, Lupe may be big national. That gangster appeal is big national, especially where schoolboy from, you feel me? So jump into that bag is one thing. He got a lot of different songs. He got some songs for the ladies as well. Um, but just delivery, what he gives to the fans when he's performing, I feel that there's gonna be um schoolboy, man. All right. My brother's gonna hate me, but he'll understand why. I'm going with schoolboy because I feel like as far as as far as Lupe, he has total control over his flow. But as far as controlling a crowd, 
schoolboy in his first couple of years rock festivals like big crowds i know that's a different vibe or whatever but when you rock that many m- amount of people and they knowing your songs pretty much it is just he has an energy about him that lupe don't have it's like a more charismatic energy where it just gets you amped and hype so much so i feel like he got a little bit more crowd control or whatever um when it comes to that matter so I, i'm going with school boy Upset victory. Upset victory. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Let's go, schoolboy. So moving on to the next round, we got Killer Mike versus Childish Gambino. Um... This is a tough one because we've definitely got um, two guys that are both into activism. We got two guys that are both very woke, um, both known for lyrics. Um, so I'm going to start at the easy route. I'm going to go marketability. Childish Gambino, because of all the shit he does outside of rap, I'm going to give it to him on, on the marketability side. Like the, yes. the Donald Glover side is so huge. Like it's hard for him not to be more as far as record sales uh exposure brand deals endorsements um just he's everywhere so yeah mm-hmm. yes indeed yes indeed yeah yeah Mr. i'm going with childish very much. um marketing very very much. yeah you know, so what do you want to go back very market want to do comedy acting uh, it, it, it gets the numbers in man it gets the numbers in you got the comedy viewers coming to see his music just because they want to be exposed to that. You got his music viewers coming to see his comedy just because they want to be exposed to that. So I mean, you, you, you got the numbers coming from both crowds. So exactly. you got the artistic crowd coming to see this what what type of different shit he's gonna do and say. So I mean, he got a lot of different crowds coming to see that one element, and they all mold together to make a different experience. Agree, agree. Very remarkable. Very remarkable. Pat, if you had any thoughts. No, I'm with I'm with you on Childish being marked, but we good. We good. Right it goes without saying. I'll just be redundant. I'm going to go next to MC and stage performance. How you perform your lyrics. Mm, that's a hard one. Because both, both, both individuals give you them. They're all on, on their stage performance. I mean, like uh, Killer Mike. I mean, like a Killer Mike, Mike show. He goes all out. I mean, like he gives you that performance, but Childish Gambino does as well. He just brings a different, a, a different element to his stage performance. You can like when he's giving those lyrics. Now that he's talking about his his other stage performances in his comedy realm and anything else, just when he's performing his music, it's something different that he brings as a performer. You feel me? Like it just draws me personally in. You feel me? Like the music with the performance is something totally different. It's a different element that bring that entices me personally. So I don't know. I'm gonna go with Chattis Gambino on the delivery of his music in that stage performance and control that crap. I'm gonna roll with Killer Mike. Killer Mike is vicious, man. Like his the way he like it even comes out on his album cuts. Like just the way it's a passion in him that rocks. Like he can rock a rock crowd or uh, like he can rock any type of crowd just off of his energy alone. Like the people are going to vibe with it because he feels whatever he's saying or singing or rapping or whatever else. He feels it so much. Everybody around him just be like, well, okay, I'll hype too. I like it. Yup. So like, I feel like he just got that. He's one of those people that, their passion is so strong, it's magnetic. Like, it draws everything else around them in. Um, so I'm going to go kill a mic, man. I, I, yeah, his shows his shows get real. All right. Yeah. All right. When, it, when it comes to stage, prof- um, damn. 
I messed that up. When it comes to stage performance, <laughs> all right, at the, at the end of the day, I look at visuals and everything, but what is usually the tiebreaker to me is like how much MC performance is in it, like how much like elemental hip hop performance you get get out of it, like that type of energy, like how how much you control it in an MC manner. And I gotta give it to Killer Mike because I would say Killer Mike when it comes to just being raw and just like in your face, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to give it to Killer Mike, pretty much, or whatever. Like, uh, he, I, I feel like when it, it that's, that's the one thing about Killer Mike that propels him. That's the, the main thing about Killer Mike that propels him to like that known status that I've seen is just how raw he is in his stage performance. And, and, and anything he do when it goes to run the jewels, when he's by himself, when, when he would outcast, when he just randomly on a, a random feature with like Bone Crusher and T.I. or whatever, he shows out each time. So I got to give it to Killer Mike. Yeah, I agree. Um, lyricism, 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 lyricism. I'm going to say Killer Mike, easy. Childish Gambino has had songs where he touches on something like for the first time, but saying something in a way that nobody else has said it, I think Killer Mike has a leg up on that as far as like punch, punch lines and witty flow. Um, the dynamics of the ways he can go with his flow. He can go political, like Childish Gambino. He can do a love song, but he can also rap some gangster shit, and they all come across as believable. He always paints the picture well with the words. So I'm going to say uh, Killer Mike on lyricism. Yeah, final answer. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, man. I know y'all going to disagree, man, but I'm going to go Childish Gambino, man. I know most people might disagree. But I mean, like, like you say, saying stuff in a different way that most people wouldn't say, and I think he does. You know, like, like I say, he has a unique way of coming off with different type of wordplay, coming from a different way in a different perspective. You feel me? So the the average man wouldn't probably catch what he's saying. So you yeah, listen to it two or three times to catch it. But I feel like the how he says what he says come off a different way just uh just because of how he came into the game um with killer mike i feel like yeah everything he says is believable because you feel like we know the straight background of what he came from and where he at what he trying to do and him putting what he's saying on wax damn right is believable the way he's saying it twist them words and give it to you this way and that way you, you're on the edge of your seat, damn right, I'm, I'm there with him. But I feel the same way with Childish. It's just different to me, you feel me? Like, y'all know the different type of hip-hop I'm on and different type of shit I listen to. So hearing it from his perspective, seeing, uh, seeing him come from the comedy aspect, and now you can take these words and do this and this and this with, I fuck with it a little bit more. Mm. Okay. Pat, Pat. I am torn between the two because I like them both. Matter of fact, I, I like them both. Like, when Childish first came out, I liked him just off of his own freestyles, and he actually showed, like, lyrical prowess, like a real MC just showing bars. And I bought Killer Mike's first album, Monster, or whatever. So... Mm -hmm. So that's when I got to go with, all right, what have they achieved so far? Lyrics. <laughs> Lyrically, what have they achieved so far? Or whatever. I got to go with Killer Mike because mm -hmm. he's done more. Just off of the, 
I see what you're saying. Come on, like the body of work. Just the body of work. Like he's he's done more, and, and like he he does go political and this that and that. I feel like with childish, he has bars, and sometimes I feel like he got better bars than Killer. He just got some punches like that. I feel like he has that too, and, but I feel like he has more lyricism when he's singing and he has more examples of him singing than he does rapping. That's real. Pretty, pretty much. So that's, that's where I have to use I have to use the the body of work as a tiebreaker because it's like on an instance I like if I hear Childish Gambino freestyling I know he got crazy bars I'm probably going to go to that first or whatever. But at the rate of how much that I get that that um those bars is not at the same amount as Killer Mike. You know what I'm, you know what I mean? Like I totally get what you mean. Yeah, like Charles Gambino. Bargain. Yeah, like we he can come out, we yeah. can we can hear something that he coming out with a new album. And no matter what he come out with, I'm excited for it. But I don't know if it's gonna be a rap album or if it's going to be a funk album or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what I'm 